We're streaming. I know, but it doesn't, it's not showing up yet. It shows up on my side. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Carrie Sparks with Pioneer Title, your Arizona title gal. I want to say, hopefully, everyone had a wonderful and memorable Memorial Day weekend. Um, business was really hot in real estate, that's for sure. Um, I was working with uh, my escrow officers kind of to you know, look at what kind of contracts were coming in over, over the long weekend. And it looks like there were quite a few successful uh, contracts that were put in. So um, if you were working with anyone at Pioneer Title, we are super excited to be helping you through the transaction. Um, <clears throat> I have some exciting stuff coming up in the future. Next week, I'm going to have uh, a Facebook Live with Daryl Turner. He is uh, number one uh, coach of escrow professionals, uh, title people in the country. Daryl's phenomenal. He's going to do a Facebook Live with me on January 3rd, which is a Wednesday at one o'clock in the afternoon. And for anyone interested in hearing what he has to say about the industry, this will be a great time to tune in. Um, I've got tons of classes and content continuing to come up. Um, launched a brand new YouTube channel today. So everything can be found over on YouTube, just hashtag AZ uh, title, title gal, and you should be able to find me. But every Tuesday, I have um, asked the underwriter with Brian Reeves from Barrett Financial. Um, he's an amazing, uh, just resource for me to go to and, and my realtors as it relates to some very complex things. And so today he's going to talk about how homeowners insurance and how it's figured from the perspective of the underwriter. Um, and so Brian, do you wanna introduce yourself a little more and give me your um, licensing information? Yeah, it's uh, Brian Reed with Barrett Financial and my NMLS license number is 694300. Contact number is 602-741-4801. So we were talking before, um, actually this morning, about how homeowners insurance can affect the price point of a home somebody might be looking for. Can you go into that a little bit from you know how it's figured in for budgeting? So awesome. So hazard insurance, homeowners insurance, uh, a lot of customers are very unclear about the way that it works. So, but it's, it, it's a very integral part in a lot of pieces to the mortgage. Uh, one of the biggest things is, is a lot of times people will bundle their insurance policies together. So they will have their car and their home and their autos and they'll receive a discount on their autos. So what they're paying out monthly, uh, they may be saving a little bit on their cars, but when you find a low premium with great coverage, that actually moves your price point and max qualifying, because the biggest lift that you're gonna get in your principal interest taxes and insurance is not necessarily the rate, the rate does have some effect on it, but what has the larger impact on your monthly payment is your hazard insurance along with your property taxes. Well, we know property taxes isn't gonna shift, it's not gonna change. Uh, your principal and interest is not gonna change or shift. Your HOA dues are not gonna change or shift, but you can have an insurance policy that has $2,000 for the year versus a policy that may have $800 for the year. So it's always important to shop your hazard insurance, especially when you can get that premium down low enough to help you qualify for more of a, more of a house. If so then maybe if you could take that into like what is adequate coverage, because when we're talking about price point, you know, for what a, what a policy costs, what is adequate from the underwriter's desk? So that's an interesting point because regardless of where you purchase, whether it's in a Scottsdale, a Gilbert, Chandler, Mesa, Tucson, Southern Arizona, the cost of materials are relatively the same. So sometimes people think that my hazard insurance or my homeowner's insurance, if they live in a really nice area, should be insured more because their house is worth more. And then they may have this exact same house in another area, which may be less or less of an appraised value. So a lot of times customers will think, well, I need that higher insurance. Well, when you look at it, to build the house in Tucson, Scottsdale, Mesa, Chandler, if it's the same house, the materials cost the same. To build that house back, it costs the same. 
So from an underwriting perspective, when we talk about insurance, we do not require a customer to basically insure the dirt. And a lot of times customers don't realize that is like, hey, I'm getting an insurance policy. My house is worth about 500,000. So I need to get an insurance policy for 400,000. Well, if your lot premium or what you have in your, what your land costs, that shouldn't have any kind of increase on what your policy is. So what insurance companies do is they offer pretty much um, three different types of policies. So you have uh, your basic policy that has your standard replacement cost and it tells you how much they're willing to pay towards replacement cost. And then they have another insurance policy that's basically replacement cost plus an additional 25% or 15% or 20% that gives you an extended replacement cost. And then you have what we call as insurance that has a guaranteed replacement. So what we want to know and what we want to care about is we want to make sure that one, the house is going to get built back to the way that it was originally, or we also want to make sure that it covers our loan amount too. Well, we can't force customers to cover our loan amounts. That's technically from a lending perspective, a violation. It's a violation of insurance policy. So we can't tell a customer, oh, you're getting an insurance policy on a $580,000 house. So your loan amount is $540,000. We need you to get an insurance policy to cover $540,000. No, you don't. What you need to do is you need to make sure that that house can be built back to its original order. So how do you figure that out? So if I look at one policy that has the dwelling coverage, I'm looking, does that dwelling coverage cover my loan amount? Okay, no, it doesn't. So then what we would need to do is what we would ask the insurance agent for is what we call as a replacement cost estimator. And that is the insurance company's breakdown of what they estimate that house should be to build it back new. So as long as we have a replacement cost estimator, and the total amount of construction of materials is lower than the amount that they're insuring, we're good, regardless of our loan amount or where we're at. Or you'll have the insurance policies when we add the 25%. If we add the 25%, we wanna make sure with that additional 25% that it will cover what the cost of construction of the materials are. Now, if the policy reads guaranteed replacement, we don't ask any questions. Because regardless, whatever happens, the insurance company is saying that we're going to build it back to the way that it's supposed to be. Then you also have differences in deductible. Usually you can have anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 to 2,500. And that drives your premium down a little bit, but usually to go with the $1,000 deductible is probably the best option depending on who the company is. It's not a severe discount. It's just a minor discount to go with a larger deductible. So I always One of the suggest other things you wanted, to, you wanted to talk about today was this, you, you mentioned service line coverage. Can you so, explain that? So many insurance policies, they will just cover the dwelling and they will cover other structures. They'll cover uh, some of the stuff. And, and you have to really read through your policy to see what it covers. Now, a lot of the insurance companies, if a water main breaks, the city's only going to take care of up to the street. So you essentially out of pocket are going to have to pay someone to take, take all, dig all that up, retrench it, rerun water, rerun gas lines, or if anything like that happens, and the homeowner's insurance won't cover it. So a lot of times you think, hey, I have a homeowner's insurance policy, and a, one of my gas lines broke, or one of my water lines broke, I should be covered, and they're going to say, no, we don't have service line coverage. So it's good to have a policy that has service line coverage. So you're connected to the street all the way up to where the city stops and you're good. So that's a good thing to have built into your insurance policy. I think I'm going to be pulling out my insurance policy and taking a look at it and seeing if I have it. My good, I, I didn't, I'd never even know that it existed. Yeah. Service line coverage. And the other thing that's big too, that, not very many insurance companies have this. Uh, there are some insurance companies that carry this, but what is called an equipment replacement uh, or damage uh, provision. So in a normal insurance policy, when you make a claim on it, 
your policy will surcharge for like three years. So they're going to increase your premium because the way that homeowners insurance, and it makes it sometimes difficult to get affordable insurance later or even get a policy, depending on how bad the claim is, if it's a water claim, whatever the situation is. So ideally people don't want to make claims on their, their homeowners insurance. Sometimes people are just like, I don't want to make a claim. I'll just do the work myself because of the impact that homeowners claims has on insurance policies. Well, there are some insurance policies that after a year, they will actually give you back 25% of your premium with no, with no claims. So that's a good feature to have. The second one is what we have is an equipment replacement, just to kind of circle back. Well, what equipment replacement does is it covers anything electronic or mechanical in the house. So if you have uh, your AC goes out or you have you know pump, pool pump equipment go out, all of these things that you can do, it's a $500 deductible. So you pay the $500 deductible and they come out and repair all of that stuff. And it doesn't count as a claim on your insurance policy. It's separate outside of your insurance policy. So your policy is not surcharged and you can replace all of these things. And these are good things to sometimes offer with an insurance policy instead of getting a home warranty. You get a home warranty, sometimes you'll get it for a year, you'll get like $500. Uh, they range anywhere from five to $700. As you buy additional years, they cost more and more. But with this, you technically don't even pay the $500 until something goes bad. So it's basically like, I'm not gonna buy a home warranty, but if something goes bad, I wanna buy a home warranty and get it covered. It's, it's almost the same thought process. So that, that's, a, that's a good feature to have with your insurance policy. So if you get an insurance policy that has you know, a low premium, they're covering your dwelling, uh, it covers all of the, the replacement cost estimates, uh, service line coverage, and also equipment and replacement program, you're pretty much covered as a homeowner. But so many homeowners don't realize that, hey, I'm just gonna call my auto insurance company have them broker out or, or quote me on my homeowners and not realize that they're either way overinsured and paying too much of a premium, they're paying too high of a deductible, or they have insufficient coverage because of all of these other things that could go wrong. What's going on in the market right now with the mortgage in the mortgage market? What are you seeing for trends right now? Trends. Uh, rates of, 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 are, are stabilizing out. They're coming, they're coming back down. Uh, that's good. Refi is still uh, good. I'm noticing some of the FICO score uh, adjusters that they were doing uh, because of the coronavirus and all that, that they were making that rate, the rates higher for certain customers. Those are starting to come back down. Purchase business, still crazy. Purchase business, still contracts getting locked in. Still the buying is not slowing down one bit. In fact, it's, it's going up quite a bit. I mean, I was even reading on Mortgage News Daily today just of all the applications that have surged for purchase right now. So, you know, values in the supply and demand is still very, very strong right now. So if, if somebody wants to get a hold of you and talk about this further, again, how do they get a hold of you? You can call me 602-741-4801. Uh, or the other thing, uh, I have a website. It's www.bkreeve.com. -E -E uh, or you could email me at B uh, is in Bravo, R is in Romeo, E is in Echo, B is in Echo, V is in Victor, E is in Echo at BarrettFinancial.com. Brian, th you know, <clears throat> thank you for doing this every Tuesday. I know that it's the end of the month. It's really been kind of a crazy day, which is a good thing. Uh, in many ways, but um, appreciate you and your time. And um, for everybody out there that's watching this, thank you so much for spending a little time with us. Um, I'm Carrie Sparks, your Arizona title gal with Pioneer Title. I can reach at 602-715-5704. I am never too busy to help somebody. I love working with my realtors, my loan officers, um, builders. I, I really kind of am broad brush strokes as to who I work with out there. So. Um, thank you for everyone who's uh, been working with me, you know, up to this point and, and into the future. I'm always growing my book of business. So 
if you don't have a current relationship with anyone at Pioneer Title, I'd love to be that person to your go-to person. So um, with that being said, have a great rest of your day and wonderful week. And thanks, Brian, again for joining me. And uh, we'll be back with this next week. Have awesome. a good one. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks. Appreciate it.